Well, hi there. Remember Jaylin Cheney, otherwise known as JB? She's the rather rotund plus size travel blogger who put out a petition earlier this year demanding that airlines give her a free seat because, you know, she can't fit on one. Well, she's back to talk about the injustices of hotels towards plus size travellers and demanding that these establishments undergo some changes so she feels safe, comfortable, and respected. Guaranteeing a pleasant travel experience without discrimination. She's also got an update on her plus size airline petition, and we'll have a look at that right after this quick sponsor. Check out this awesome new game, Honkai Star Rail. Now available on PS5 with data sync across PC and mobile, this new multi-platform galactic fantasy RPG comes from the creators of Hoyoverse, the makers of the already successful Genshin Impact. And the best thing about it, it's free to play. With more than 80 million downloads in less than five months of its launch, the game is a huge global hit. 10 minutes into the game and you're captured by the intriguing plotline and the space fantasy environment. Search for treasure chests, solve puzzles, explore each NPC story and uncover the secrets of the world. Collect more than 20 playable characters with their own unique personalities, backstories and battle strengths to boost your battle team. The game uses a turn-based battle experience but is highly tactical so you'll need to choose your character lineup carefully to defeat certain enemies. Check out these awesome limited 5 star characters Jing Liu and Duo Topaz and Numbi. She's a powerful ice destruction type character who transforms to fight. Once she removes her blindfold she deals punishing damage with an enhanced ability. The duo are a combined force of a young girl and her pet. She's a fire hunt type character with superior single target damage while her pet Numbi can be summoned for support. The game's regularly updated and in the version 1.4 you'll be able to experience an all new Beelabog story with two all new maps released and the return of the character Seal. Also check out the Aetherium Wars where you can grab your favourite monster and pit it against another. There's 10 free gifts waiting to be won. Log in for 7 days to claim 10 Star Rail special passes for free which can be used to draw Jing Liu or Topaz. Click the link in the description below to experience these characters and use the redemption codes provided to get 50 stellar jade. Happy gaming. So you'd think if you can't fit into an aeroplane seat, you might consider, geez, maybe I shouldn't be scarfing down burgers while on a medical oxygen supply. Maybe this is a me problem, but you'd be wrong. You see, you can get aeroplane friendly oxygen concentrators, so all good. All you need is a seat for each ass cheek and one for the old oxygen machine, but you shouldn't be expected to pay for it because that would be discriminatory. Let's check in and see how the plus size air travel petition is going. I'm Jalen Cheney. I'm a plus size content creator and I recently launched a plus size travel petition to protect customers of size when they travel by air. It's been seen by over 100 million people. 100 million people? That's a lot of people. You should be able to make some major change with that. Oh, 35,000 signatures. Oh well, keep pushing, j -Bay. Customers of size means any individual whose body might encroach on the neighboring seat when traveling by air due to factors like body shape, height, and physical conditions. Together, we can challenge misconceptions and false information and make a positive impact in the world for customers of size and travelers of all sizes and abilities. Well, that is a good definition. Any passenger whose body encroaches onto the person's seat sitting next to them, that would be you. My petition is based on personal experiences of discrimination and discomfort while traveling by myself and with my partner, who's also plus size. We have faced hateful comments, disapproving looks, and even refusal to sit next to us because of our size. Yeah, I get that. And they're probably not dis approving looks. I know the exact look you're talking about. I've done it many times. It's the, oh fuck, please don't be sitting next to me look. My plus size travel petition aims to bring attention to the mistreatment plus size travelers face and address the absence of policies catering to our needs. We urge that the Federal Aviation Administration, also known as the FAA, require airlines to establish customer of size policies. That prioritizes the comfort and well-being of all passengers. The comfort and well-being of all passengers? No, this is about your comfort. I mean, if anyone wants to be more comfortable on an airplane, they can buy two seats. They can buy a whole row if they want. Now I've had issues with leg room because I'm about six foot two and my knees tend to touch the seat in front. But I can get from Melbourne to the Gold Coast for about 90 bucks, sometimes cheaper. For you Americans, that's like New York to Miami. That's not bad. You put up with a couple of hours of discomfort for that. Now I could buy a seat with extra leg room or even a whole row for like 270 bucks. But I'm a tight ass, so I'm not going to do that. This would involve offering an extra free seat or multiple seats to accommodate some plus size travelers needs and ensure our comfort and safety during our flight. See, a complimentary seat or complimentary seats? What you're doing here is asking for other people to pay for your travel because airlines have to make a profit and they rely on selling those seats to do that. I mean, you can only fit a certain amount of people into a plane and that plane burns a certain amount of fuel per flight. It's basic maths, j -Bay. Additionally, the petition advocates for reimbursement for customers of size who independently purchase their additional seats. This would involve establishing a 
establishing a straightforward refund process that can easily be accessed online or through customer service. Ensuring passengers are not financially burdened for simply seeking the space that they need. So now you want the extra seat for free and you want the airline to foot additional admin costs. Why don't you just eat less, eat better foods and jump on a treadmill, I don't know. I bet she says something like, some people can't lose weight or something like that. They always do. As for accommodations, airlines should also have a written procedure for airport assistance to ensure that customers of size have the necessary support they need. This would involve providing information on available airport assistance options and how to request them. The petition also calls for priority boarding for customers of size, as we may require more time and space to get to our seats and get comfortably situated. So now you want to be wheelchaired up the ramp, you want to be given priority boarding, and you want a free seat for your right ass cheek, and another one for your oxygen concentrator. I mean, do you want priority disembarkment as well? Imagine that, it's always a pain in the ass getting off a plane, because you've landed where you want to be, you're sick of being on the plane, you just want to get off and have a piss, and now all of a sudden you've got to wait for J-Bay to make her way off the plane. Very, 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 very slowly. The petition acknowledges the significance of employee training to enable all staff to treat customers of size with dignity and respect. It urges airlines and government agencies that regulate the airline industry to conduct training on using respectful language that does not focus on a person's body size or abilities. Oh, so now you want staff training as well. God, does it ever end? And what is respectful language that doesn't focus on a person's body size or ability? Well, hey there, J-Bay. We've organized a motorized scooter to help you power walk through the airport, and we'd like to offer you two additional complimentary seats as part of our normal everyday passenger lucky draw. Many of my followers have avoided flying for years due to discriminatory experiences. Many of us have faced ridicule, humiliation, and embarrassment while flying. However, the struggle begins before we even leave our homes, as there is little to no readily available information for plus size passengers and customers of size. This is why I started this initiative, to get a conversation initiated. The reimbursement of funds to plus size travelers who buy their extra seat ahead of time would provide financial relief and fairness. How would it provide fairness, J-Bay? If they introduce this policy, it's going to drive ticket prices up for everyone else. How can it not? It would also make the process more straightforward and accessible, allowing passengers to request a refund easily. This would also stop the disproportionate cost that plus size travelers incur, simply because of needing additional room for their body type. It's not a disproportionate cost, J-Bay. If you need two seats, you've got to buy two seats. I mean, if you go to KFC, they're not going to give you a complimentary upgrade from a Zinger meal to a family feast because a Zinger meal doesn't fill you up. If you go to a Toyota dealership looking for a Prius, they're not going to give you a complimentary upgrade to a land cruiser just because you can't fit into a Prius. So if you haven't already, please sign the petition today by going to change.org slash plus size travel. Every signature matters and adds weight to our cause. Every signature matters, guys. It adds weight to the cause. <laughs> I will actively seek opportunities to engage with key stakeholders and decision makers in the travel industry. She's going to engage with key stakeholders in the industry, guys. <laughs> there has been a misunderstanding that I want other passengers to foot the bill for the policy changes outlined in my petition. That's not a misunderstanding. That's literally what you want. Now, it might not be in a direct way. Like, they're not going to charge me double if I'm behind you in the queue. But you are going to drive up prices if you get your way, J-Bay. That rhymed. The airlines are supposed to be serving us, yet they only do what they think is best for their bottom line. Yeah, they're a business, J-Bay. People have argued that since they have to pay more for luggage if it weighs more, plus-size passengers should have to pay more for their airplane tickets. Let's be clear, luggage is an inanimate object, and people are human beings. The airplane doesn't know that. It's not going to burn less fuel because you're a human being. Humans have a right to a certain level of decency, respect, and safety. Not to mention, weighing customers and charging them more based on their weight is a discriminatory practice. It wouldn't be a discriminatory practice. But it would be a hassle and embarrassing for some people. Why don't we just make this the rule? If you can fit into one seat, then you only have to buy one seat. Problem solved. We have witnessed too many cases of public shaming of plus size travelers. This not only violates our rights, but also fuels harmful stereotypes and fat phobia. It's time to stop this hostility and create an inclusive environment. Plus size individuals do not go out of their way to inconvenience others. We want policies and accommodations that provide us with the space and comfort that we need. Blaming us or perpetuating discrimination is unfair. Instead, let's challenge discriminatory actions. Attitudes. Like I said, the plane doesn't discriminate, jet fuel doesn't discriminate, these aren't discriminatory practices, you just need to lose some weight. People like to claim that being given or even purchasing an additional second seat is taking that seat away from another person. But those same people also say that they don't want to sit next to a plus size person. And here's the thing, you can't have it both ways. The simple fact is that plus size people exist. 
They always have and they always will. So stop holding us to this hypocritical standard. What? That's not a hypocritical standard. People don't want to sit next to you if you've only bought one seat. Therefore, you should buy two seats. Making weight loss seem like an easy and cheap solution ignores the complexity of managing weight and the fact that it's not feasible or possible for everyone. Yes, it is. It's feasible and practical for everyone. You cannot stay the size that you are if you eat less and eat healthier. You don't even have to exercise. Just eat less. In your case, much, much less. Isn't it funny you never see an Ethiopian go, oh, it's glandular. I've tried and tried and tried, but I just can't lose the weight. Let's focus on transforming the industry to be accommodating and inclusive for everybody. If you liked this video, make sure to give me a big old thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Uh-huh. Well, that was interesting. Now let's have a look at our new list of demands for hotels. That's right. Hotels aren't getting out of this either. These are the exact steps that hotels can take to be more size inclusive and accessible for travelers of all sizes. Number one on the list, provide sturdy wider chairs without armrests. I like armrests, and they do often provide sturdy wider chairs. They're called couches. Number two on the list, ensure beds with strong support and a higher weight capacity. Strong support, like as in the springs and shit? Yeah, I guess. I've slept on some terrible hotel beds, but it's usually because they have those old spring mattresses that dig into your back. But higher weight capacity beds? I mean, hotels usually have queen size beds. Are you telling me you need a higher weight capacity queen size bed for yourself? That thing's meant to support two people. Although she did say her partner was plus size too. So we're probably talking about eight or nine hundred pounds between the both of them. What's the weight capacity of a typical queen size bed? Weight capacity. Queen size bed. Most conventional queen and king size mattresses have a weight limit of up to 500 pounds. Woohoo! Well, it looks like you're gonna have to book a twin room and fuck on the floor. <laughs> Number three, make elevators and hallways spacious. Make elevators and hallways spacious. Now she's demanding structural change. <laughs> like increase the size of your elevator shaft. Fucking hell, that's like a rebuild. Same goes with the hallways. Make hallways and elevators spacious. God, why don't you make yourself a bit thinner? Number four, install grab bars and showers and near toilets. But then it's going to look like a hospital. People don't want a hotel that looks like a hospital. They've usually got like a disabled room if it's a big hotel. So just accept the fact that you're volunteering voluntarily disabled and book the disabled room. Number five, train staff to be respectful, understanding and accommodating to travelers of all sizes. I think largely they're already going to be respectful. They don't need training. People usually want to keep their jobs. Number six, provide pool lifts and handrails at the entry of the pool. What is a pool lift? <laughs> Number seven, hotel restaurants should have roomy seating options. They usually do, but again, it's kind of your problem. Just lose some pudding. Number eight, offer larger beach and pool seating. Yeah, same thing, bigger chairs. Bigger chairs everywhere. We're too big for airplane seats. We're too big for restaurant seats. We're too big for pool and beach seats. We're too big for hotel beds. J-Bay, you're just too big. Number nine, Hotels should provide size-inclusive bathrobes. Bring your own circus tent. I mean, I guess they could have a couple of plus-size bathrobes, but you'd have to make a special request, and that would be discriminatory and disrespectful, j -Bay. And hotels should also provide bath sheets or plus-size friendly towels so that travelers of all sizes and abilities can use them comfortably. What is a bath sheet? Is that like a bath mat? Like that you stand on? I've never heard of a bath sheet. And last but not least, display clear and accurate information on these amenities on hotel websites. Include weight limits, seat dimensions, and things like that. By implementing these size inclusive hotel amenities, hotels can become more inclusive and accommodating. Make sure you write down the dimensions of all the ass room in the hotel. God, j -Bay, I hate to sound like a broken record, but you just need to lose some weight, love. You might not even need your oxygen concentrator Anymore. That'd be a good thing. You're in like your late 20s. You shouldn't be on an oxygen concentrator. And you shouldn't be asking the world to change for you. Lose weight, j -Bay. Anyway, I'll leave it there. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Or at my Twitter account, Bear underscore Ing. I'm also on Rumble, BitChute, Locals, all that good stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ta. Goodbye. Recession, session.